KCPS. What's going to happen today is <clears throat> it's an opportunity for you all in a very unscripted manner to uh, talk to us about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, but we also not just want to talk about the bad and the ugly, we want to also get some ideals around <coughs> solutions. How do we make this school system a better school system for you? Some of you are seniors. You're going to be leaving. I remember the first year when I did this in 2016, some of the seniors were like, it would be nice if we had athletic fields and things like that. Well, guess what? We have that now. Uh, but it was after their time. And so it does. It takes time to, to, to make some of these changes and to put things in place. But we really do need to know. Uh, and then what happens is because it's being live streamed, it's an opportunity for your peers across the school district and anybody in, in, in the country that wants to log in and, or, or you know, go to our site and look at this, they're going to be able to hear some of the things that you are, are giving to me. No question will be too difficult. Um, some of them I will tell you, <clears throat> I may not have an answer for. And, you know, just because I sit here as superintendent doesn't mean that I have all of the answers. Uh, and I think any of you who ultimately will one day lead and be over a major organization understand that the goal is to be honest and transparent with everyone but to also depend on the people that you surrounded yourself with so there are people in this room that if I'm not able to provide an answer they may be able to provide an answer and if we can't give you an answer right now we will go out and we will try to find a solution and then come back to you and give you a response uh, that's how we operate Will we be able to do everything that you ask us to do right now? No. Some of it we will. Some of it may be more long term. Some of it just may not be realistic at all. But the truth is, I want you all to be able to speak your truth, express how things are going, and ultimately hold us accountable. We all get paid. Everybody in here except for the board member. Everybody else get paid. She's a volunteer. But all the rest of us get paid to do a job and ultimately we just want to make sure that there's a level playing field for every single one of you, regardless of how you show up. Because we all show up differently to school. We all got our own struggles. Life is different for every single one of us. And for some of us, it ain't fair. I'm just telling you that. But we can help equalize that through what we do in this school system for you all. And you all know my story. Life wasn't fair for me at all. But I'm here. You haven't heard my story? Ooh wee. I'll have to tell you. It's, it, well, I'll have to do it another time because I know today is, um, today is for you all. It's not about me telling my story. But yeah, I, I came from nothing at all. And I'm here. Getting picked on for not having Jordans, having Jordashes when I was in school. <laughs> Serious. Right? Now. I'm buying one, he's got 34 pairs, I'm buying one in every single pair. Right? Anybody that was clowning me, can't clown no more. <laughs> that's what I want to create for every single one of you. That if that's what you want to do, whatever it is, you want to travel this world, you want to break bread with the Chiefs president and be out on the practice field, you want to own your own business, that's all I want. I, just, I want to give you hope, everybody. That's what I'm trying to do. So I don't know if we're supposed to start right now. Justin stepped out. I don't know if he's getting the AC prep kids uh, before we get started. But here's what I do want to do while, while that's happening. <clears throat> Can I get staff to just kind of introduce yourselves? These are the people that are um, in here, and, that, and whether it's teachers that are coming that came with you, um, but any staff member in here, please let these students know who you are and what you do in the organization. Start. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Collier and I am the Chief Human Resource Officer here in Kansas City Public Schools. I also serve as Chief of Staff and I've worked in this district now. This is actually my 20th year. I started as a teacher. Actually, I started as a long-term sub, then became a teacher, um, and then I became an administrator, principal of Border Star for three years, and then I moved to Central Office in the role that I'm in now. Awesome. Good to see you all today. Good morning. I'm Linda Quinley. I am the Chief of Finance and Operations. So the things that keep the buildings going, busing, child nutrition services facilities, and the finance side, those are my responsibilities. 
Tori Jackson, Assistant Virginia for School Leadership. I work with 16 schools, the high school of uh, East, Paseo, and Lincoln Prep. I'm uh, Luis Cordova. I'm the Chief uh, Student Support Services Officer. And my job is to make sure that you get the support services, you and your family, that uh, uh, you all need whenever you need it. So my office does that with social workers and family support specialists and many more things. I think some of you have dealt with some of your friends and relatives being shot. We've had a good number of students that have been murdered in our school district since I've started here. He is responsible for bringing those counselors and getting all of those folks in to come and talk to you. I know we lost a kid here at Southeast earlier this year, the first week of school or second week of school. So, you know, some of the people that deal with the uh, counseling related services that comes from his division. I'm Bill Thornton. I'm a chief legal counselor. So my job is to try to get folks out of jail, get them out of paper, so that they can do their job. So. That's our, that's our lawyer, the <laughs> number one lawyer for the system. My name is Trinity Davis. I'm the assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction. So I work to make sure the teachers have the resources and the things that you need. And sometimes I deal directly, as you know, with students if they need my support. Okay. Um, my name is Sheila Brown. I'm an instructional coach at Paseo. And I don't know what that means. That means that I go into classrooms and I try to help uh, teachers with instruction and help them make sure that Awesome. Good morning. I am Melvin Brown from Paseo Academy. I am the parent and community resource person. And basically what that means is I work with your parents, work with your families, basically bridge the gap between them and the school. Also create school partnerships within the community and anything else that they pay me to do. <laughs> All right, going to the back. Just, we're just trying to wait for that AC prep kids to get here, but we're going to get started after we do these introductions. Okay. So there'll be 915. Hi, I'm Patty Manser, and I'm on the Kansas City School Board, and it's kind of like having a second full-time job, but it's volunteer work. It's, it's service, it's, and you all do service in your schools, I'm sure, and it's something that I do that makes me feel like I'm giving back to the community. And there's probably two big jobs that a school board member has, and one is to make sure you have a good and qualified superintendent in your district, so I was part of the group that helped recruit this guy to Kansas City and is trying to help keep him in Kansas City. And the second job that I have is making sure that we have enough money and resources so that you all can get the kinds of things you want in your educations. And when Dr. Bedell talks about sports facilities, he comes to us and we make sure, are there the monies to do that? Is there the community support? So that's part of the work I do. That's true. So a lot of what you may ask us to do, if it requires a substantial financial amount of money or financial impact, they have to vote on it. The seven board members, we have to then go and present to them and say, here's what we believe would, would help our students. But anything from a financial standpoint, whether it's one penny all the way up to a $50 million contract, that goes through them. I'm Jason Roberts. I'm the lead for Missouri Options. Uh, which is a program that takes students that are behind a little bit in credits and gets them to graduate with their graduating class, hopefully. And I am proud to announce that we have our very first graduate. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Good morning. My name is Brian Deal. I'm the Assistant Director of Education for the Kansas City, Missouri Schools. I am very new. I've only been here a month. But my job is to make sure that all of you can see and hear all of the media in your classrooms, cafeterias, and libraries and theater spaces. He's really good, too, already. <laughs> Justin Robinson, Director of Communications, which means I've turned my love for talking into a career which they pay me for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jonathan, I'm in the Communications Department, too, and I'm in bilingual communication. So you, some of you have uh, classmates that speak Spanish and their parents only speak Spanish. Well, I make sure that they are able to understand what we're communicating with them and communicating them in Yes. Uh, Candy Perla, I am the librarian here at Southeast High School Library. Uh, Southeast High School, uh, and this is my 24th year here in Kansas City Public School. Thank you. Thank you for that. And last person, this is the guy that makes sure that 
like your, your graduation, some of the sporting events, all of those things get posted to our website. So, and he does a lot of graphic design. So I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Luther Okeo. Some of you know me, I've already made a video about one of you, Deja, she didn't even know. But I made one of her for uh, Scholar Superstars. But like he says, I'm usually all around the district making some kind of video or making some kind of graphics that um, mainly everybody needs. Try to make this guy look as good as possible because it's funny what you see when he's not, when you're behind the camera. So, yeah. All right, Luther, don't start. It's too early. Yeah, so he's got, he's got all of the, uh, you know, he'll come in the office. And when I, when I do those videos that go out to the community, you know, some days I can just flow with it and I'm perfect. And then there are other days where I'm like, man, we need to do that over. We need to do that over. So I think he's going to put together a blooper reel one day and um, he's got all the lost tapes. All right. So, Justin, I think we're ready to go ahead and get this started. So we have our first question. You ready to do this? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's, go, let's get into it. Uh, one thing is, like, tutoring. Like, I know throughout my high school days, I had uh, trouble, like, when I was in, like, when I had trouble, like, in school and I didn't understand something, a lot of times we didn't have, like, that after school, you know, the only ability to earn certain things, but I feel like shout out to them every day for people who need, you know. Okay, so part of what happens with tutoring is, we have, and I think this is where, I don't see a principal in here, but generally, when I was a high school principal, I would offer tutoring, you know, two days a week. Normally, it would probably be on a Monday and a Tuesday and then a, and then, I mean, a Monday and a Wednesday and then a Tuesday and a Thursday. And I would offer it at different times for different subject areas simply because we do have a lot of teachers that are also sponsors. They coach sports. They some of our teachers do some of the social organizations. And then some of our teachers just simply don't have the ability because they have to go home and they got their own family that they need to take care of. So it would be kind of hard to do it every week. The way you can accomplish this every day of the week, and I would not, I would take Friday off. I wouldn't say, I would say just Monday through Thursday, is then if we're able to get out and our schools have their own budgets, right? And if we're able to hire some outside people that, would, that are willing to come in and offer some tutoring, or even looking at college students that may want to come in and earn some, a couple of dollars to come in and tutor from 3 until 6 o'clock, those are ways that we can go about doing it. Uh, what I will tell you, our um, assistant superintendent over C curriculum and instruction is jotting this down, but that is something that we can definitely look into. Um, the, the, the other piece is, you, generally, you want to have enough students. Anytime you offer tutoring, you need to at least have a minimum of student, 10 students that are going to be willing to stay after to, to justify, you know, the cost that it, would, that it would take to have a teacher or somebody outside come in. So it's just like when students ask me, what are we doing for ACT prep? Well, we started ACT prep on Saturdays last year. But I told students when we had a town hall meeting like this, you need to tell some of your friends so that we can have enough people to show up because it costs a lot of money to do ACT prep. We are willing to do it, but we just need to make sure that we have enough students to justify the amount of money that we're spending on it. But this is something that we can definitely look into. So now we can throw this ball around. I don't know whoever, whoever's ready. It's a soft ball. Throw that, throw it on over to you. Catch it, don't, the bad look, you on camera. Oh. <laughs> Okay, please stand up and speak into the ball. Um, hello, um, my name is Kyle Washington and I attend Potato Academy. And one of my questions is that um, I have a concern about the vigor of our um, academic courses. Okay. Um, at Potato, we only offer a total of three AP courses. Um, one for juniors, one for seniors, and I believe one for freshmen. I would love if we had more, if we could introduce more AP classes to prepare us for college or for the people who aren't, who are just more ahead in general, just allow them to progress rather than sit there in a class that they already know the information or they're not being challenged. I would love to see more AP programs or IB programs or just anything 
to get the students who are just kind of just sitting there in classes ahead okay. to make sure they're learning. <clears throat> So that's a great question and it's something that we just presented to the board recently around what our plans are to increase the number of students that are taking AP classes, IB classes. The truth is, and it, and it really is, it's embarrassing for me to hear that, that the school only offer three AP classes. When, we, when I started in 2016, we had some high schools that didn't offer any, zero. So when we talk about equity, that's not equity. Equity is that every single student, regardless of what high school you go to, have access to the more rigorous course offerings. That is something that we're building right now. We're going to continue to send teachers to get training at Washburn University, Rice University. I don't know how many we have um, scheduled. Uh, I don't know if we've already have that count on how many are, are, have already signed up to go do the training this summer. that there will be about 20 that we will budget for that will go and get the training because part of it is our teachers also have to be trained on how to be able to teach an AP class because it's one thing to offer an AP class it's another than when you take the class and now it's time to take the assessment and you can't even get above a one on the assessment so part of it is also having teachers who really understand how to teach the rigor that we need and and we are we are adding we're building in AP last year was our first year we required every high school to have AP Human Geography. This year, every school is required to have AP Human Geography and AP US History. Next year, we'll be adding another one. The other thing that you can do, um, and this probably is a little bit more difficult, but I'm giving ideals because we got educators in here who can take this stuff back to your sites. We have virtual schools. And virtual schools also offer advanced placement classes where you can go and take sign up virtually to take some AP classes that might not be like I wouldn't say go take an AP calc. I think you need a live teacher for that. But there are some AP classes that you actually can take online where they will have instructors on the other end that will help you work through it. And then we work at our school level around a teacher that may have some expertise to help you in person. The other thing that you can do because sometimes the, the, the bell schedule doesn't allow, the master schedule doesn't allow for it. One reason, if your school's not big enough, you don't have enough sections. Right now, our high schools are just not big enough. And this is part of what we're trying to talk to our board about. We're very inefficient as a school system. We got a couple of high schools that only have about 500 kids. So the experiences and the opportunities that you all get from a curriculum standpoint, they're going to be limited just because we don't have enough students, meaning that we don't have enough teachers. So we got to take a strong look at what does our high school system look like over the next couple of years? How do we make decisions that will allow for you all to get the robust experiences that you deserve? When I was a high school principal, I didn't have flexibility in my master schedule to offer AP classes, some of the AP classes that students wanted. I had a seven period schedule. So here's what I did. I went to one of my teachers. I said, I got about, I said, I have about eight kids that want to that take AP statistics. Are you willing to teach AP statistics? Our school doesn't start until 750. If I can get you to come in and the kids can eat breakfast in the classroom with you, are you all, and I can get a commitment from these parents that they will get the kids to school by 650, are you willing to do a zero period? So I built a zero period in, and then at the end of the day, I had another AP class that I offered that didn't have enough, because we just didn't have enough students to build it into the regular schedule, but we did another one, and we called that an eighth period. And then the kids stayed after, and then they were able to take th those AP classes and then take their exam at the end of the year, uh, and that worked out for us. The other piece is we have grad labs at all of your schools, and right now I went into a few of them, and a lot of kids in there are taking classes that they flunked before, that, so they're retaking those courses. But you can also go in there, talk to your counselor, talk to your principal. You can take courses that may not be offered at your school, so you can still do some AP courses, and those you have possibilities for those. Okay? In the grad lab, that's right, because yeah. that's new this year. All right, next, throw the ball, We're, who's ready? You have what? You don't know how to throw? <laughs> okay, so to my understanding at Southeast, 
just put it out there towards you. Athletes are not allowed to have half schedules. So like, so those athletes who are maybe ahead, who already got their credits, they're not allowed a half schedule and be able to come back for practice or something like that. So I'm speaking on us to why we can't have a half schedule just because we're athletes. Daryl? <laughs> Uh, our counselors. So my counselor is Ms. Jarvis. All right. So and and, and so Dr. Daryl Davis, go ahead and introduce yourself so they know who you are, and what you do. Uh, Daryl Davis, Assistant Superintendent for Equity, Inclusion, and Innovation, one of the uh, departments overseeing athletics. The state of Missouri says that an athlete must have at least a half schedule at a school, and so we'll probably have to get with your counselor to look at your particular uh, variables. Thank you. And so I, I'm wondering, though, about that. Um, is the concern uh, around that if, if students leave, will they not come back? I mean, I'm trying to figure that piece out um, because I know as a high school principal, generally with seniors, we do have some seniors that have a half day schedule, but they play sports. My whole my issue was trying to get them to get off my campus. I was trying to, you know, I like I don't need you hanging around. If you're going to be on my campus, then you need to be in the library until the bell ring. So it was like the total opposite. I didn't have kids wanting to leave. And I just was like, you can't be hanging around because it looks like you're loitering and it makes it look bad to the to the person, to visitors coming in. What you're saying is you in essence, you guys, is it just you or is it like everybody's like, hey, we're we only got a half day schedule we really don't want to be here. We want to be able to go in and then come back. I'm not sure what it is, but I questioned a half schedule and she was like, oh, you play this and that, so you won't be eligible for a half schedule. So I didn't even put in for a half schedule. All right, so that's something we'll, we'll look into with, with, with the administration here. Yeah, so, so really the only students we should have that are half-day students are like second semester seniors. Mm -hmm. really the only ones yeah. should qualify. So, uh, Chris, or you're not a sex semester senior. Yeah, no, not yet. So we'll, we'll talk individually and see uh, in preparation for next semester. Okay, thank you. All right, good question. All right. all right. If you all are preparing us for college, why not show it in the school where, we're like, when we go to college, we be already college ready? Okay, so give me some examples of, of what, when you say, show it in the school, like, like what do you want to see? At that, or what's missing that you think we should have in the school? Because I got my definition of, in my opinion, college bound is, you know, we offer, and, and to me it's, it's more than just being college bound. So let me, let me help, let me try to see if I can answer this for you. We want to make sure that our building conveys a message that we are driving kids towards wanting to be college ready. Doesn't mean that you have to go to college. So to me, our strategic plan says, we want our students to be prepared for college, career, or life. So you can handle the rigors of all three, whatever path you want to go. So then the message needs to be conveyed that when I come into a school, am I seeing college banners? Am I seeing that the kids have access to dual credit, AP type classes? Am I seeing things like this where you're telling me, here's the, the roadmap around which you need to be able to, to engage in to get to college? Do we have a focus on ACT and SAT prep? Are those things in place, right? That's what a college-bound culture sets up. If I come into your building and we know the big ACT day or pre-ACT day, because everybody has to take pre-ACT because I put that in place after my first year, that 9, 10, and 11th graders have to take it, that there's a countdown that, hey, you got X amount of days ready to take pre-ACT. You got X amount of days to take the ACT. Those are things that promote a college-bound culture. Um, if those things aren't evident, then that's part of our responsibility then as school leadership executives to work with our principals on. Anything I missed on that? Okay. All right. Um, I feel like Southeast being a high school isn't really a college curriculum type of school. How you said it should apply to life, work, or college. Um, there is no advance for the students to go to college is just oh sign up or you don't it's oh go to Missouri options or you don't and for the ACT that should be a way for us to go to college right the ACT classroom they're supposed to get people to come in there 
since the first day of school. And if I'm not mistaken, ain't nobody been in there yet to help students with preparing for the ACT. And on top of that, ACT is on October 26th. And as far as I know, there's nobody here that I can come ask to help. Can I get help from my ACT study? Yeah, they'll give me a book, but where's the personal interactions? Where's the study guide or anything else? Like, and for life, there's no, like, say that a student come up here, um, let's see, battling something because of what happened the day before, the yeah. night before. There's no outlet for here, us, for us at school. Like, there's no way we can release that. So when we come to school, it gets released in a different behavior instead of a positive way because there's no positive expression being um, provided for us. So right now, I mean, wow, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to let you sit down on that one because, <laughs> nah, because that's real. That's uh, what you just said. This, that, that is real. Those are the kind of things that I think tend to plague urban school districts. Um, understanding how our students show up, respecting how they show up, because not everybody shows up the same, and not everybody shows up the way that, that, that we, you know, there are people who've never lived through some of the things y'all lived through. So you're talking about life, right? And, and so if your guards are up like this, and you kind of, you mad at the world because you're dealing with all of this stuff outside the school, it's unfair for us then to ex expect you to come in here and be an exemplary student if we haven't gotten to the root cause of why you show up the way that you show up. And what I, what I wanted to do as superintendent was to put more financial resources into our schools so that we would have people that you could offload on. The, the, the piece that concerns me now, and I'm not just saying whether it's just, you know, schools in KCPS, but schools around the country is, some of our schools have an inordinate amount of resources. The deal is, how are we utilizing them? Have we put them in a, in a systemic manner where you all can take full advantage of it? Do you know that all of these different resources set up in here? Because, yeah, if you come in here and you showing up, you, you know, you didn't eat or you don't have electricity or, you, you know, you don't know your dad or your mom got beat up the night before by somebody or you homeless, you living from home to home, it's, it's going to be hard on you to come in here and show up ready to learn. It's time to learn A squared plus B squared equal three equals C squared. You thinking about how the hell am I going to survive when I get out of here? Right. And it's a lot of y'all that show up like that. And so I don't know that I've done a good enough job of working with our principals to make sure that we have these outlets in place. That was part of the reason why we wanted to put in the problem um, solving teams, right? So that they could meet with teachers and sit down and talk about individual students and say, this student is struggling. Is there anybody in here that can reach this student? You know how I was reached? 10th grade year, I became ineligible to play basketball. I was skipping class and I was shooting dice in the bathroom. I'll just be real with y'all, right? I mean, I'm just telling you, I, I was, I'm a regular dude I'm a superintendent now, but I was a regular student like most students that don't have any guidance. I lived with my grandmother. She couldn't control me, and I became ineligible. And I asked my teacher to get my English teacher to change the grade. I said, can you get her to change that grade so I can play? He said, I can't help you. I cried. Like, literally, I cried. I couldn't hoop for six games. But then my homeroom teacher pulled me up to his desk, and he said to me, you throwing away. He said, you academically talented, and you don't even know it. He said, you throwing it away because you mad at the world. And he said, your guards are up. And he said, until you lower it, until you go find somebody to talk to, it's going to hurt you in your future. Two weeks later, I came back to Mr. Barrett, and I told him everything I was going through. I told him, I just let it all out. Cried in front of him. Well, I'm not a crybaby, but two times I did cry. I cried when I couldn't hoop, and then telling him about I, I had to let it all out. Like I was homeless. Mom was a drug addict. Dad, my stepfather beating the heck out of her every other night, you know, waking up and seeing people get knocked out on the corner of my house. When I look out the window, if you didn't live in our neighborhood and you went in that corner store, you were getting put to sleep. I've been on the other side of it, being in other neighborhoods and getting jumped just because that wasn't my neighborhood. I've been through it. 
So the, the fact of the matter is, once I talked to Mr. Barrett, I got it off my chest. He went and found some people, and two teachers rallied behind me. And then I started making an honor roll. First time I got called down to the assembly for something good, and I liked how that felt. Because here's the deal, even the worst kid, the worst kid in our schools don't want to be failures, man. Nobody wants to be a loser. Part of it is we are crying out for help. And so I think that's something that I have to work on because I'm here and I'm seeing several of you shake your head. Y'all clapped after that, which is telling me that some of y'all got some deep stuff going on and you don't have anybody that you can outlet it to. You don't, or because you haven't found a person that you trust enough that, can, that you can go to and just say, here's what I'm dealing with. And so then that slows you down on the development for life. It slows you down socially because you, you, you're not going to be socially connected. Emotionally, you're broken. And then it all impacts you academically because it's hard for you then to learn because you carry in all of this weight. So that's um, Dr. Slade just walked in. He's one of the assistant superintendents. Both of your principals just walked in from Southeast. I believe this is a Southeast student. Um, we got an assistant principal from Central. Okay, I saw some of your kids clap their hands too. And so these are the things that we will work on. I promise you. I promise you. Right here. Um, my name is Adriel Johnson. Um, I attend Central High School. Um, I'm a senior. So I have been with uh, Central for four, going on four years. Um, one thing, I got two things I really want to touch on. The first one is, um, as a senior, um, since I've been at Central, it's been really hard to um, get prepared for the ACT. So basically the ACT is a, a standardized test that sometimes in society it kind of defines how smart you are. And as much as they tell you that it doesn't, it really kind of does. So I feel like, you know, um, it's my last year and in order for me to get accepted to colleges, you know, that are out of state, like um, Jackson State, Alcorn, you know, uh, HBCUs, I have to have a high um, ACT score in order, um, besides like outside scholarships. So um, like our advisory is 30 minutes. Um, and I feel like it should be more um, pushed towards ACT prep. And I feel like, you know, my freshman year, we started pre-ACT, so we took the test. But it's like I didn't know how important it was until my senior year. So I feel mm, like... That's real. Okay. If, and um, especially for freshmen, it should be pushed really hard as how important it is because, yes, it can define you in, in certain aspects, but in other aspects, it can't. So I was like just hoping that the district can find some way freshman year to push ACT prep or just push to them how important it is, you know, to score high or give us a better curriculum um, on how to um, ace the test. Right. Because we already know the average, you know, of an ACT um, score, especially in urban schools. And so um, I really feel like that's something that they should really touch on. Um, I going to the second statement. Yes, you can. Okay, the second statement is I feel like um, all schools, and especially in like the urban, because we are in the urban, urban um, core. district core, uh, we need to offer uh, mental illness classes, push it, because um, I know people around me who are battling. Like, it's really tough, and it really hurts my feelings to see that they're going through this because it's like you do wake up, you know, you come to school, and it's like teachers. You know, as a senior, my la the last past two weeks has been so tough for me because it's like I've been pushing to, to strive hard to, to get out of school, to make it so where I can be successful in life. And I feel like teachers are really hard on students when they don't understand what's going on at home or how they're mentally processing things. So I feel like, you know, maybe it could be a way where teachers can, you know, do a mental illness class because you are in a district where kids come from broken homes. You know, they are homeless. They don't have food and stuff like that. And I feel like that's important because in order for us to move on, you know, as a school, as a district, we have to first recognize the problem, which is, yes, we do have kids who battle mental illness who haven't recognized exactly what it is that they're battling. So I feel like it's really important that we offer those type of classes or simply, you know, counselors kind of touch more on it and teachers realize that it is students who, you know, are battling things that they should really address instead of like, why are you acting like that or what's wrong with you today, you know, addressing it in a different manner. So let me ask you this, and this, this really goes to anybody in here. How many of you, because here's what I do know, you're not the only one in your school that show up with these struggles. How many of you have gotten together and, and said, 
because I was at Central last year. Let me just say it like this. I sat in the principal's office with four female students, one that went to Dillard, one that went to MU. I think the other two are at HCC or MCC. But they kind of shared with us some of the stuff they were going through, some of their struggles, and, um, and, it, and it opened up our eyes around, okay, some of the things that we need to do, which, like I said, you got some of these high schools that have 500 students or less. They got three APs, three assistant principals. They got two counselors. They have, they have instructional specialists. They have, I don't know if they have social workers. I know we have a family therapist that works at a couple of our schools, Mr. Uh, Jeff. Um, my question to you is, do anybody understand and know what you're going through? Have you, have you gone to somebody to say, here's what I'm dealing with right now, and here's why, you know, it's been a struggle for me these last couple of weeks? Okay, so um, I do talk, I'm really active with my counselors. Yeah. So, like, and my college advisors. So I'm, I talk to a lot of the teachers around the school. But I can go to them and I can tell them, okay, it's my senior year, and, um, you know, I'm trying to do what I can. Because my freshman and my sophomore year, it wasn't that good. So, you know, I was fresh as a high school, so I didn't really, you know, I didn't take it serious until my junior year. And so my junior year is when I came into realization when I moved with my godmom that, you know, I need a way out of my situation. In order for me to get out of my situation, I have to first start with self. So I do have counselors that I talk to every now and then, but it's like, you know, teachers, you know, if I'm late on work or I'm trying to catch up, you know, it's kind of hard for me to get them to understand, okay, you know, my mom was just in the hospital two weeks ago. So I'm far behind because, you know, I'm trying to work, make sure she's taken care of. And so it's like, you, I tell them that, but it's like, okay, we still going to go on with what we got to do, which I understand that. I understand that you got a job to be done, but then again, I am your student, like, you know, and I am in your class. And if I fail, you know, you sh we all fail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I fail your class, it, you know, say a majority, like, um, for example, my AP class, um, I take AP Lit, and so um, the past two weeks has been tough, and I usually maintain an A in her class, you know, I pass her class, but it's like I was trying to talk to her about, okay, you know, I'm going through this situation at home, and, you know, if I'm coming up at you wrong, it's not on purpose, it's because I'm dealing with something as far as my inner issues, and so it was just, yes, I had somebody to talk to, but it's like, okay, you know, we understand, and then they just keep going on about it. Like, I need you to really sit here and, like, realize what I'm trying to tell you because as a senior, you know, they tell you, okay, you know, it's your last year, you know, finish off strong. And that's what I'm trying to do, but I need the support of my okay. teachers and my administration. All right, so have you also signed up, and this goes to any, for anybody in here, of, you know, for a mentor? No. Because, because a mentor helps, right? A mentor helps. You, you know, Dr. Davis is back here, Daryl Davis. He's also over our mentoring program. We did that big kickoff. Um, I know personally my wife mentors somebody at Central. She's mentored a student at Central all three years we've been here. So I know she's actively involved, and there are a lot of people like that that would love to be able to mentor somebody like you. You have this kind of ambition, somebody that you can offload with that will help you through. So we'd love to get you connected there. But to your point, the urgency around really helping to try to help freshmen understand, because they just don't see. They just don't, man. I, I got two high schoolers, man. My son is a junior now. I, the light is just finally hitting them this year. I was like, okay, what, what, it, and I'm the superintendent. <laughs> you know, and it's just hitting him this year that like, I gotta be serious. I gotta grind it out and it's hard once I fall behind. So I, 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 we got to also figure that piece out with freshmen. It's hard. I, it's hard around helping to get them to have the urgency and the understanding that what you do right now, how it's going to impact you by the time you become a junior. But that's where we can also use people like you. Right? We could get you and maybe two other students that are seniors to maybe have a conversation, a roundtable conversation with freshmen and sit down and just talk to them about why it's important now that you do these things differently. So excellent, excellent, and um, we would love to get you connected with a mentor, too, to get you through the rest of this year. Uh, Dr. Slade, we're, real quick. <clears throat> Just for my reference, I'm the assistant superintendent of the test school at South Beach. Because when I, when I visit the school, I see the principals and the assistant principals. I always see them in the I always see them trying to be involved and trying to 
provide support. So can you just like give me some more details of what you mean by support? Like even when I'm at Southeast, I see the administration in the hallway working with the students. Central all the time, I know. Principal Van Green, Mr. Robin, if you could point to any student, they can tell you the whole life story of the student. So can you just provide me like with more, with more details of what you mean? What you, how you define support, you can make sure we provide the support for you. You want me to? Yeah, you can. Okay, so, um, yes, don't get me wrong. Since I've been at Central, um, at first when I left from the school I graduated from in eighth grade, I was like, I'm not going to Central. Because, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm about to go here. So from the environment, it has changed a lot. Like, I, I, I take pride in my school all the way. Like, I am go Central all the time because from my freshman year to my senior year, I have seen a lot change. So don't get me wrong, the district has done a lot, and so has Madry. But my whole thing is, I got friends walking around that didn't deal with the death of friends and, the, you know, parents, problems at home. They don't know how to deal with it. I had a friend sit right in front of me and start busting out crying because she don't know how to deal with not having her friend, you know, a death um, as far as a friend. And so, yes, they go around, and don't get me wrong, they do, you know, talk to students, try to figure out what it is that's going on. But I feel like you got students who don't, like, who are not like me, who don't stand out, who don't say, you know, good morning, how you doing, or they just going about their day. Yeah. So I feel like it's important to really push, you know, okay, um, we offer mental illness class. Because I'm like, mental is important, especially in the educational system, because it's like, I'm, some people just come to school just to come because they have to come. But you want to push it like, okay, come to school because it's important that, you know, education is first. So I feel like offering, you know, maybe courses or, you know, maybe a five minute period where, you know, you can talk to a student like, okay, you know, how you feeling today? What's going on, you know? And it's like, it's really tough for kids to, to talk to adults when they don't understand because they'll simply say, okay, you know, I was there before, you know, it's okay, you'll be all right. But no, people really need to talk it out, like release mm -hmm. the pain and stress that they're going through in order for them, you know, to progress in life. So, I mean, just offering, you know, a time where, or maybe a class or a day or to where a student can sit there and just relax and just release the stress that they have um, going on. I have, I have a better understanding. That's awesome. And I will say this to you. Um, I don't know what you plan on doing in the future. I don't know if you made a decision, but, uh, you know, you, 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 you probably need to uh, think about going into education, you know, and maybe, maybe teach, maybe become a counselor, maybe become a family therapist, you know, you, something. You, you, I mean, because I think part of it, too, is, and this is what we're missing in education, there simply aren't enough people that come out of the urban core that actually go into education. So you already got context of what the struggle is, and then that context really can connect. Because here's what I know about students. They know that they y'all know whether we real or not. You you pick that off real quick. And y'all talk about it like, man, I even though I might not like this teacher, I respect this teacher because this teacher has high expectations for me. These administrators have high expectations for me. Or you go back and say, this is a terrible teacher. This is a terrible administrator. The superintendent sucks, whatever it may be. Um, but y'all know. And the key is trying to make sure that we also hire people that have that contextual understanding that, you know, it, the, struggle, the struggle is real, but that you can overcome it. Um. My name is Sherry Thompson and I'm a student at Facel and I kind of wanted to piggyback off of what she was talking about because like how he said as central like the administrators and people be walking in the hallway talking to students that does not happen at Facel. I hardly ever see our t uh, principal like Miss Dr. Hayes or Mr. Palm. I hardly ever see them. The only time they come in there is if they check it for phones and I'm like I'm just wondering like y'all so worried about making sure we have the right uniform like the right attire making sure we're not wearing nothing inappropriate. Y'all push the phone rule but y'all don't push like people that's going through stuff like y'all don't talk about um y'all don't try to interact with y'all students when they're going through stuff like y'all so worried about our phones and like this that and the other when they have other things that needs to be talked about like I was saying like um Mr. Palmer like they only come into classrooms checking for phones backpacks and other unnecessary stuff and I actually talk to a student like hey what y'all working on today what's this or if they see somebody down they don't ask what's wrong like I hardly ever see our principals ever at all in our classrooms okay um, so we'll look into that, but I think the visibility piece is a critical aspect of, of the work that we do. Yep, almost tore you up. But, um, 
But the visibility yeah. piece is critical, but it's not just being visible. It's about also having a level of presence um, to, be able to, to, to be able to talk to students and to be able to try to figure out what's going on. Um, so that's something Sister Soup is here hearing that. So we'll definitely, because what we'll do is we'll go back. We don't, you know, we just go back and say, here's what the students are saying. And so whether it's valid or not, this is the perception. And it may not be the perception of all, but it's the perception. And we often know, too, that the perception is a reality. In most cases, that's how people will see it. So that's your truth. We will work on that. And it's probably not just yours. It may be some other students, too. Um, sex education class, like, I feel like we should have that more now because I get girls, like, since I'm a senior, I guess they look up to me. So I get girls that come up to me and ask me, like, oh, our peer pressure, like, their peer pressure into having sex or their boyfriend is hot and ready. And, like, they want them. But I, me as a person, you know, I'm like, I really can't explain because I'm a kid, too. I'm learning myself. So it's like right. I feel like we should have more sex education class and more about peer pressure and stuff so they can learn, like, the safety of it. What do we do? Uh, Dr. Davis, we what, we just teach two units in health. So it's not the what? Okay. Hi. Okay. Um. Yeah, because at my school we we have health, but not once since I've been I've been at that school for three years. But ever since I had health, they have not said anything about it. It's more on. Um, they talk about relationships, STDs. yeah, but they don't talk about that, and they don't, they don't talk, they don't talk about, about anything else. They just talk about relationships with family and stuff like that, and oh. that's basically it. They don't, you know, pressure it, like. So, they don't, in the health books, uh, the curriculum, they just talk about relationships. They don't talk about the STDs and all of that stuff. Oh, we're going to have to take a look at that. I was scared straight, huh? I have seen that, but I was scared straight when I took it in health. So they had the pictures and everything in there. And you was like, hey, man, I don't want no parts of that life. So, okay, Dr. Davis, we, we will, we, listen, we write curriculum every year. We revise curriculum every year. Um, we will, that 100% will be something that we will look at because it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, how many of you are, have any of you ever seen Oz? Remember when Oz used to come on in the HBO? Probably the grown-ups. Oz, Oz scared the life out of me. I, you know, at a BC in jail, I was like, I'm not jail material, right? There's certain things that scare me straight. So, okay, we will, we will, we'll look at our curriculum on that. Go ahead, Alan. All right, all right. So my name is Alan. I go to Central High School. And my question is, uh, why does the curriculum go by so fast? Like, our teacher can teach us one thing and we only learn it for like two days and then we're on to another topic. And then they do like review and like we don't know it because they're going so fast. And now students are stressing to catch up and then do what we're doing now. Cause like I had a 3.9 last year and like this year I'm kind of struggling. So it's like I'm stressing and trying to keep up with the work we're doing now and make up the work that we already did. So it's like, why is the curriculum going? <laughs> okay. Why is it going so fast? Trinity. So that's a good question. So what we have, our, our units split up. So it may be a two-week unit, a four-week unit. We're not so strict on the pacing because your teachers have to look at the data. So if they see that you're not getting it, there's a time. We even built in a time for them to reteach. So that's something that we probably need to work with and look at what the teachers are actually doing because there's a time for them to reteach things before they move on to the next time. We built that in there from what we heard from you and what we heard from you. So we need to make sure. So the, the, the question is, are they actually doing it no. then based on no. Some of the head movements for some of our students. Capital no. That's why you have achievement series and those form that the teacher gives you, so that they can make sure that you're getting it. So we'll work on Okay. Uh, I'm Zion, and I kind of got a code, but uh, I will. Oh yeah, I go to Central High School. And 2020. <laughs> and I would like to, you know what I'm saying, piggyback off what Alan said, because I'm in pre-calc, and I'm struggling in there, you know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> like, she she flying through everything, and everything is book work, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, she a, she a,
talk to us, you know what I'm saying, about a one problem, and then we'd be on something totally different the next day. And I'm like, I'm confused, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, I didn't came to her one-on-one, -on -one, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need help. And then, like, she like, I can't stay after school. And then sometimes in the classroom, she'll fall asleep. And I'm like, it's, it's hard for me to even, you know what I'm saying, understand what's going on. And then it's like, I got, then she'll give us, like, problems eight through 72 every second problem in the book and yes and i'm like i don't know what's going on i'm saying it's like and it's hard for me to for me to like you know what i'm saying attempt to pass and so it's like i'm dead serious you know what i'm saying it's like that's really how it is you know what i'm saying i talked to mr robbins i talked to mr robbins a lot you know what i'm saying about it and then like as seniors we ain't got them city year people so it's like we we can't you know what i'm saying we can't get extra help like we can't come to nobody for like uh, tutoring or nothing you know what i'm saying so it's like, if we fail, we fail. That's on you. Yeah. So I honestly, this is probably the most painful part of doing these town hall meetings, is you kind of get to hear uh, directly from students what's going on and then trying to balance how we then will respond. Uh, because we don't want to be in a situation where we're beating teachers down, uh, because that's the other part. We don't have a lot of teachers to choose from because we don't have enough people going into education. That's part of our issue. And so I, I want us to be as constructive. I want us to be as constructive as we can be in a, in a very positive manner to help our teachers be aware of their practices. And uh, like I said, it, the good thing is you got administrators in here and you got an administrator here who can flat out teach math too. He's a math teacher. I saw him because he taught us at a PD recently, and he's good. And so at the end of the day, um, part of it then is us having to get in the classrooms as, as administrators and model. You know, that's, that's something we have to do. I'm not a math guy, I was, but I was a social studies guy, and I had a teacher struggling. And I went in, and I taught the five things of geography, and I did a two-day unit. And I even invited my boss to come in and evaluate me when I was a high school principal. I said, I want you to come and observe me because I want to make sure that I still got it. And so at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's another piece as we work with our administrators saying, because I wasn't math, but I hired somebody who had a math background. I hired somebody who had a science background, somebody who had an English background. And so we, um, he heard you loud and clear. Uh, we, he heard you loud and clear. And then we need to figure out what the supports look like, because you're saying city year is only for underclassmen? Yeah, like freshmen and sophomores, I'm saying, like juniors and seniors, we ain't, we ain't got the city year people. So. Mm. Okay, I, I, I just wasn't aware of that. I thought they city year was for the whole school. Classes, I'm saying, I don't know what she's talking about. And then, like, everything at our school, it's not, it's not being exposed enough, you know what I'm saying, for us to actually even know what's going on. So. Like they say, oh, we got papers. Like who knows about it? You know what I'm saying? Like y'all have some papers in the office that we don't we don't get to because like y'all don't tell us there's papers in there. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't got no flyers on the wall saying, oh, it's a paper you can come sign up for. Like, none of that. We ain't got okay. it. Okay. I mean, like, okay. Mentioned, we got some, but we don't know nothing about it. All right. Yeah. We were all we were all principals all the down to the principals at some point. So when I was a high school principal, I would have like ten or fifteen students come to me and say. We need to speak to you about it, Casey. So I'm encouraging you. I mean, it's great that Dr. Bell comes out here and does this type of town hall meeting, but you can get together as a group and say, we need to meet with you, administration, and discuss your concerns with the administration. If they don't act on it, please believe that Dr. Bell will address it. I, and I will, but, but that's the piece for me. That's why I was saying to you, who have you spoken to, right? Because one of the things you said that was powerful is it's also about my own efficacy. Like, I got to activate myself, and I got to have self-accountability. And that is part of this, right? So at the end of the day, it's much more powerful when 10 to 15 of y'all say, principals, administrators, we need to sit down, and we need to have a conversation with you about things that we want to see happen in this school. Not only for us, but we also want to set it up for those coming behind us. That's going to be critical in any of the schools. The most powerful voice that we have in this system is the student voice. Y'all hear me? That gets oh, ignored a lot. It, but yeah, but it's it, ignored a lot. Y'all yeah. say that, but it gets ignored a lot. 
most of us don't get like hurt. Yeah. Yeah. We we can sit here all day and tell us our problems, but it's up to y'all to right. You know, like, address them. Right, right, that's what I'm right. saying. Right. I went to school. Like, okay. I'm making my money. Right. That's, that's your pride. <laughs> no, that's what y'all say though. They say that's, that's, what you, that's how y'all do us. And it's like that's why we got our guard up. Y'all, yeah, you know I see what you're saying. So. I ain't gotta be. And then that right. makes yeah. that makes us don't want to be here. It's like, okay, you don't care, then why why should I care? Why should I let my guard down if you ain't gonna listen? That makes no sense. But let me ask you this then, because you're right. Um, when we think about how many classes you have in a, in a, in an average day, eight. Eight. So, out of those eight classes, how many of those classes do you feel you have teachers that one? One out of the eight. One that that one out of the eight that what that listens that can be flexible with me that can understand and put themselves in my shoes okay that's not a good statistic no it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's not who got the ball i want to ask you. okay yeah, let's go so my question is can you please stand we, in missouri option why are we located in success like we bad students no, I just think that that's just around the, the uh, location. It's a centrally located facility. So it's, you know, it's on a bus line. That's my understanding. It was there before I started. So it's just something that we have, that we have kept there. What we were thinking about doing is, um, you know, we talked about this on Saturday at our, our retreat about having almost a center that we could utilize one of our do vacant buildings and almost have it as an as a as a an option optional type program where we would house multiple in alternative that's part of the problem people view alternative as bad alternative is not bad there's aspects of alternative where you have to deal with behaviors but alternative is more options alternative is the middle college alternative are some of these other type of programs where your adult ed is an alternative program so you know, I think we, that's the piece that I'm working with our team on, is, and Dr. Cordoba is the person leading that. I, I want to rebrand what alternative is, because alternative should not be approached through this deficit lens of something bad, but because it is housed where Anderson is, I can see why that would be a concern. Now, you could put it in another school, but if neighborhood factors already generate a negative perception of that school because of the neighborhood factors, People are going to still say, well, why are you putting it here? This is a bad school, even though the school really isn't bad. I mean, honestly, I mean, let's, let's just be real about this. Central's not a bad school. You go inside a Central, that's, but, but everybody has this perception. That is, it, and it's, and it's, a, it's a mindset, right? Because of whatever happened years ago, that if you come in that building right now, I, I hear what you're saying. So that's the piece that we're working on now. Um, the, when I started the middle college, they wanted us to get 17 to 24 year olds that dropped out of school. And they wanted us, they said, we need you to put them back in their school so they can get their high school diploma or get their GEDs. And I said, I can't do that. And they said, why? I said, because I did that as a high school principal. I go knock on doors, get kids off of their couches. They come back to school and then they in there only for two weeks. You know why? Because the environment didn't change for them. The embarrassment factor that they are over age and they're behind made them drop out. So what we said was, we're gonna do our middle college on the MCC Penn Valley campus. We're gonna give all of those kids that dropped out the rights and privileges of a college student. It eliminates the embarrassment factor. And now you gotta, you, we had to double the teachers over there. We got two now, right? We can hold up to 60, 17 to 24 year olds that need to get their high school diplomas or GEDs, and it's a waiting list because the embarrassment factor is gone, but the environment gives them a different mentality. I'm on a college campus. I actually believe when I finish that I can go to college. So a lot of them now are getting their associate's degree, and some of them are then getting $4,000 scholarships so that they can get a trade. Because the truth is, you don't have to go to college to live a great life. Some people go to college and they broke they still paying. I'm paying on college loans. I make good money, but dang, I had to spend a lot of money to get that doctorate degree, and I'm still paying on student loans. You don't have to incur debt. You can go right into the industry and work, and then ultimately generate enough money where then if you want to go to college later on, 
you can do it and you don't have debt. So that's something that we are working on right now, how we rebrand our, our whole alternative system as a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think for us, like a way for underclassmen, I think a way for undermen, underclassmen should be able to like open up their perspective and even juniors and seniors should be able to do something like internships so they can foreshadow somebody at a job so they know if they want to go to college for this or know if they just need to get a trade for this, like shed some light on them because the um, underclassmen was telling me how like Emmanuel Tech Juniors and seniors can go and get their trade and decide what they want to do, but there's no like window for sophomores and freshmen to do that. So they're like kind of closed-minded because they don't know the options that are in front of them. All right. So that's a great question. Uh, there was so we just hired our last person for our career technology education department probably two weeks ago. For the first time, we got a full-blown college, which is CTE. We got a full-blown CTE division. We just had a retreat last Wednesday or Thursday. We already created our theory of action. A theory of action is basically what is it that we want in terms of the outcomes for how we're going to develop this program. Um, so we're working on that now. We're building it out. It's actually the last major thing from an instructional standpoint that, we are, that, we, that we're fixing. We've had to fix a lot of stuff. And so the truth is, ultimately for us, coming in at the 11th grade, we want to have situations where our high schools can have kids do exploratory courses in the 9th grade, and then they can start taking those various career pathways in the 10th grade and then matriculate all the way through. So an example would be, I did electrical construction in high school in Rochester, New York. My 9th grade year, I took about six different courses, and then I signed up for three that I wanted. I got into electrical construction. 10th grade year, I took uh, one period class, 11th grade, two period class, 12th grade, three period class. My 12th grade year, I got to work at Kodak. So instead of going to class, I went to Kodak from 1230 to 330. I made $4 and a quarter an hour, and I got graded learning how to do wiring in a commercial type situation. So then when I graduated, I had the option. I can go to college or actually Kodak had offered me a job. I decided not to go to Kodak because I saw the stock market at that time. Their stocks were dropping and of course they're obsolete now. Um, but I learned that in there. So ultimately our strategic plan calls for we want all of our kids and it's going to take time. Like this is not going to happen overnight. I want every kid in here to have options. You can either go to college you got a, some type of industry recognized certification or you ready to go into the military or entrepreneurship. But that's what I'm working on right now. That is the piece we'll be presenting to our board, the framework around what we're doing in that area on the 23rd of October, which you all, which I know you won't do, you can log in and you can see us live stream so you can see the presentation. This is what we're working on. All right? Five minutes left, okay. <clears throat> Well, my name is Gabby. I'm a student at Southeast High School, and I'm a sophomore. Okay. My question is, why is it so easy to send a student to ISS instead of having them do something productive for the rest of the day? They go down there, and they can't talk, can't have a computer, not allowed to do nothing. Like, why don't we have it to where they can go to a room and do work instead of being down there all day just sleep? Well, I mean, the, the intent of ISS is for you to go down there and do your work. But, but you're saying that's some not... teachers who don't, like, send work down there. That's what I'm saying. And it's some students that get sent down there for, like, reasons that could be resolved like with a teacher that's what i'm saying like it's some students that go down there for no reason and it ain't even good enough reason to go down there and just stare at four walls all day that's what i'm asking okay well i i think we just have to go and visit and um dr slade will he works directly with the principals on that but the purpose of iss and i honestly i'm just i, I try to give y'all examples because i want to give you real examples I, you know i took over my high school in houston same thing was happening Kids were just coming in and they were going to sleep. My expectation was, we're not in here to babysit students. I don't want you at home, because the alternative with you being at home is worse. Uh, by the time I put you in ISS, you've done some repeated things. I'm not putting you in there for something that's real frivolous and minor. Um, but you've done some multiple violations that causes me to put you in ISS. So part of it is then also making sure 
that we adhere to the code of student conduct, which kind of tells you the different steps. And it's in there. I think everybody in here received one because you have to take it home because I had to sign off on, on my kids. But a, a, applying what's in there and making sure that we're not being punitive in how we discipline our students. But um, those are things that, like I said, the reason why everybody's in here, this is not lip service. You can go back and view previous town halls, student town halls. A lot of things that you brought up to us got, have been addressed a lot in the past. And we can give concrete examples. So we will, we will, we will look into that for you. All right, who, who had an extra question? Go back here. We haven't gotten to the back. Well, I just wanted to say I believe it's important to provide resources for the, for us, the children, and the, well, for us, um, the staff, and the parents. You know, we should have access to educational websites that provide information and give us exercises. So, you know, starting from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year, based on the subjects learned in each um, quarter, the parents should also have, you know, should, should be provided what the students are learning beforehand so we can pre better prepare for the school year. I okay. also think it's important, um, you know, to, like, you know, bring different resources. Like I know, um, personally me, I use Math Antics, Can Academy, and other resources, but the main point is to enable, you know, take, give us, you know, enable us to take the initiative for individual learning. You know, it's not just the teachers that need to teach us, but we need to teach ourselves and learn how to work by ourselves. So there, there should be some resources that do that. And also I wanted to talk about how the parents, you know, the parents need to be active too, because, you know, different things are going on in the household, like, you know, as they were talking about, but the parents need resources and support, like they need to, things that help with tutoring, jobs, pantries, different things like that. So, you know, because if they're, you know, better prepared, then that'll help them support us. And if they support us, then we can do a better job at school. And I also wanted to talk about maybe tutoring. And because, you know, I know during the weekends, there's different tutoring services that can help us, but sometimes we don't have access to that because of um, transportation. So I think that it's good that if the schools may be, um, bring buses that would transport us to, like for instance, I go to the Du Bois Center, but yeah. it's a little bit hard because I catch the bus at the Du Bois Center. I think that that would be easier just if they can, um, if school buses can go pick us up and drop us off. All right. What grade are you in? Seventh grade? Woo! All right. Um, let, 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 me, let me say this. Um, okay. So... A couple of things on that. I hear you on the transportation piece. The transportation piece is a major concern uh, for me across the board. We're going to actually go to our board on the, is it the 23rd, Ms. Quinley? And we're going to ask the board to give us approval to purchase four activity buses. Oh, six. Six total, six total right? Now, the, the, the buses will be utilized to help support us with our extracurricular services. They will be buses that we will own because we own our own bus lot now. So we will be able to, but I would want to house those buses at the different schools. I mean, over time, I would love to have a bus for every single one of our secondary schools so that we can do these kind of activities. Um, but that's part of the reason why I entered into that partnership with KCATA. KCATA is the transit authority, the, the uh, city buses. buses. Every kid, but it don't impact you until you get into high school. Every kid that's in high school in our school system, if you want to have transportation, we have a partnership where we will put, if your parents come and sign up, on the back of your ID badge will be a strip that you can just, you can swipe and you can ride the Metro Transit Authority 24-7. We just put that in place a year ago, last year was our first year, this is our second year. Anybody using that in here? Does it work? It works well, you don't have to pay a penny and it opens up the city to you. So we got that piece taken care of already and that's a partnership that will continue. As you matriculate into high school, you won't even have to worry about paying for a bus pass. But I understand what you're saying. It does go back to, everything always goes back to money, everybody. 
And you and it, it is not cheap to run school buses to only pick up four or five kids. Right? Just like I said with the ACT thing. If I get enough of you saying to me, Dr. Bedell, I want an ACT prep course, even if the test is coming up here in April, there's going to be another one that will, I mean, in October, there, there will be more, right? If you all say to me, Dr. Bedell, we got enough students across all of these schools that if y'all open up 2901 McGee on a Saturday morning, I will find money and I will make sure we got internal teachers that will come in on a Saturday and we'll pay, we'll pay them to come in and give y'all ACT prep, leading you right up to whenever that test is. I just gotta have enough students. The money is not a problem with that one. It's a lot more expensive to transport students all around the city. That's, that one is a lot harder. That's, that's, why it's, that's why the transportation piece is, is an issue, especially when we have families that don't, if they have to work on Saturday and they have to drive, then you all are kind of out of luck because you don't have, you don't, you just don't have the ability then to have somebody drop you off and pick you up. I think we got. Can we do one more? No. No. Okay. I know we got to end because I. Okay. Give Dr. Bedell a round of applause. All right. Um, give yourselves a round of applause. Good job, Doc. Uh, here's what I'm willing to do. I'll be, I'll be coming over to your schools. You know, y'all know I just pop up. I do unannounced visits, and y'all see me walking around in the hallways, and I'm just not looking for anything bad. I don't go to schools to be punitive, but I do walk around. I do go up to students, and I say, hey, tell me how's things going. I've been in some of your classes where I've come and asked you, maybe not some of you in here, what are you learning? Um, I, I will do that. And so I will be around, and then generally, I'm pretty visible. Some of y'all might get mad about this, but on Saturdays, normally there's Saturdays where we will open up the gym at Central and we in there balling on Saturdays. You know, we not only do we ball, we have volleyball open, we have the track open, we have the weight room open, we play music. And on Saturdays, generally from 10 until about 12 or 1, we run the gym and we just, and it's a way to bring everybody together. And what I love about those Saturdays is we have students that come over there from East. I've had, we've had students come from Raytown, I think, or somewhere to come and play. But, you know, nobody's cussing, nobody's fighting, uh, and we just have a good time. And that's ultimately where I want us to get to as a district, that, like, we're going to compete against each other in the IL. But the IL is our, our, is our conference for sports, right? But here's the deal. What I don't ever want to see is when one of the IL teams that's in our school district compete against another team and we out here cheering for the other team to beat up on us. Like, we're family, man. I'm not, I'm not with that. I'm not with that at all. If Central's out here playing, I would love to see that if we are competing, that East, Lincoln, everybody else is cheering them on. Now, if we playing against each other, by all means, Central should be trying to kill Southeast, Southeast should be trying to kill Central. But if we competing against other people, <laughs> if we competing against other people, like we got to ride, we got to ride and die for KCPS. Like we're one unit. And, and, and I see you shaking your head, but that's a bad mentality. Oh, so, no. oh, I my head oh, too. okay. About what I was saying though, like us riding. Yeah, I'm with you with that. Oh, okay. Bet, bet. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. All right. Cool. I don't know what you trying to pound me. No, I was trying to slap you up. This is how we do it. God. All right. So, anyhow, I'm done, y'all. I love doing this, but I will be at your schools. And any, I already told y'all what you need to do, especially on some of these things. I will find money to make it happen on that ACT piece. All right? All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Yeah.